Hello friends, today we're making delicious passion fruit macarons. I will show you how to make the beautiful colorful tie-dye shells and also the amazing passion fruit ganache. If you enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel, I post new videos every week. Begin by sifting together the almond flour and the powdered sugar and then set it aside. Place a bowl over a pan with barely simmering water. Then add sugar and egg white powder. You don't have to use egg white powder, it's completely optional. Then add the egg whites and whisk until the mixture is frothy and the sugar is completely melted. You can test by touching the mixture between your fingers and if you don't feel any sugar granules, you can remove it from the heat. Then transfer the syrup to the bowl of a mixer. Start whisking on low and then gradually increase the speed to medium and then to medium high and continue to whip until the meringue achieves stiff peaks. To check if the peaks are stiff, you should pull the whip up and the peaks should be shooting straight up. They should not be bending down to the side. Here, I'm going to transfer the meringue to this bowl so I can show you the macaronage process a little bit better. Pour the sifted powdered sugar and almond flour into the stiff meringue and start folding with a spatula. And then we're going to fold until we achieve the perfect consistency. So for the perfect consistency, you should be able to pick up the batter with a spatula and draw several figure eights with the batter that's flowing up the spatula without having it break up. And then even if the batter breaks up, it still continues to flow off the spatula slowly and effortlessly. So now we're going to place a piping bag inside of this cup and then we're going to fold the top of the piping bag over the sides of the cup so this way the bag is going to be kept open. Then squeeze a small amount of food coloring on a plate. I've used pink, burgundy, peach, and yellow food coloring. And then using a brush, we're going to brush a vertical line on the sides of the bag, from the bottom to the top. And we're just going to make sure that they're all spaced out nicely. So after I've brushed all the four colors inside the piping bag, we're going to pour the batter in. And now we can begin to pipe. Place the piping bag directly 90 degrees over the center of each circle template. Apply gentle pressure and carefully pipe for about three seconds and then quickly pull the bag up. And as you can see, it's going to take a few macarons for the colors to start coming out with a batter. And towards the end, it's going to be very colorful. And I brushed a very small amount of food coloring on the bags this time. And after this, I made another batch where I brushed a lot of color on the side of the bags. And as you can see here, I'm piping that better. It was coming out really colorful. The only problem was that most of this cracked, especially in the places where I had a lot of color. So I don't recommend using a whole lot of food coloring. Anyway, back to our other batter. After you pipe the macarons, Tap the trays against the counter or you can tap the bottom of the trays against your hand to release any air bubbles. And also use a toothpick to pop any remaining air bubbles from the surface of the macarons. Then let the shells rest for 20 to 40 minutes so they dry out. You know that they're ready to be baked when you can gently touch the surface of a macaron and it doesn't stick to your finger. I bake my shells at a 325 Fahrenheit oven. The oven temperature is going to vary the temperature that's best for your oven might be different than mine, so it's good to experiment with different temperatures and find out what works best for you. After five minutes, I rotate the tray again. This is not something that every baker has to do. I have to do it, otherwise my macarons will come out lopsided. And I bake each tray for about 15 to 20 minutes. Halfway through, I place a piece of parchment paper or foil on top of my macarons when I'm baking white macarons so that they don't get browned. To test if the macarons done baking, you can try to move a macaron and it shouldn't feel jiggly. If the macaron is still jiggly, keep baking. If it feels firm, you can remove it from the oven. 
And now we're going to make the passion fruit ganache filling. First, we're going to heat up the passion fruit pulp in a small pan until it comes to a boil. And then we're going to pour it over the chopped chocolate or the chocolate chips. Let it stand for a minute. And then start stirring with a spatula until the chocolate is completely melted. And then we're going to let this come to room temperature. You will notice that as you let this come to room temperature, it's going to get very light in color. And that's totally okay. You can also refrigerate this for about 30 to 40 minutes, stirring every 15 minutes or so until it has the perfect piping consistency. Then we're going to place the ganache inside of a piping bag and pipe it on the bottom shelves of the macarons. Don't forget to let the macarons mature in the fridge overnight before serving. I hope you enjoyed today's video. For the full recipe and for the full instructions, go to my website, paisintacos.com. I'm going to put a link down below in the description box. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!